Hello boys, welcome back to another session of video tutorials and in this uh, video we will be discussing about another important tissue called connective tissue and this video is meant for class 11th biology students and this is meant for 10th July 2020 and connective tissue provides the structural framework and support to different tissues and helps in body defense, repair, comma, fat storage, etc. So basically, as the name suggests, connecting, it connects two organs and hence the name connective tissue. This tissue is formed from mesoderm. This mesoderm of the embryo is the most abundant and widely distributed tissues in our body. Uh, we divide or classify this based on arrangement of cells and matrix into three loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue and specialized connective tissue. Loose connective tissue, cells and fibers are loosely arranged as the term gives you in semi-fluid ground. Example, areolar and adipose tissue. Dense connective tissue, cells and fibers are tightly arranged, example ligament and tendon, these are very very important for us. Specialized connective tissue, it is a special type of tissue like cartilage, bone, lymph, blood etc. So how do you classify this connective tissue? As we said, it is basically three types, connective tissue proper, skeletal tissue and vascular tissue. And under connective tissue, we have got areolar tissue, adipose tissue, white fibrous, yellow elastic, reticular. Under skeletal tissue, we have got cartilage and bone. Under cartilage, hairline cartilage, fibrous cartilage, calcified cartilage. Under bone, compact bone and spongy bone. Of course, under vascular tissue, most important fluids that are present in our body, blood and lymph. Now we start with connected tissue proper, aerial or tissue, what is the location? It is distributed almost all over the animal body and what is the function of it? They connect one tissue or organ with others and also forms packaging material in all the organs. Look at the diagram, there is a matrix, there is a macrophage, there is a collagen fibers, yellow fibers, mast cells, all this. So, Structure, it consists of transparent jelly-like sticky matrix that contains all these fibers and cells that we talked. So we got white fiber, it's formed by protein called collagen. There's a yellow fiber, it is elastic protein, you need to remember this. And the cells, you need to remember all these, that is fibroblasts. Look at that fibroblast diagram, large, flat, flat spindle shape, long process oval long nucleus as you are seeing it secretes essential substance for matrix and fibers and macrophages large long lived irregular cells macrophages they engulf foreign particles or microbes and dead cells these play a very crucial role in our defense in our immune system and mast cells these are also called mastocytes oval shaped cells as you are seeing in the diagram granulated cytoplasm, they are small in size, produces two uh, protein substances, heparin and histamine, these are amino acids, heparin and histamine and also they also play a very very important role in our immune system. We will talk about at length about these when we talk of immune system. And then you have got uh, plasma cells, round and large, nucleus is present in the center, they synthesize antibodies, look at that, they synthesize antibodies, that's why they play a very important role. Then adipose tissue, it is uh, mainly made up of fat cells, adipocytes we call it, with large fat globules, heredity, exercise of the amount of fat we eat can all affect the amount of fat our adipose tissue stores. Where is it located? It's present around heart, kidney, blood vessels and in camel of course it's in the hump, in whale it's blubber and in frogs in fat bodies. So they reserve food 
prevent heat loss act as shock absorbers shock absorbers and why fibrous tissue collagen fibers of course they are very tough and inelastic and they are present in tendons white fibers are parallelly arranged bound together by aerial or tissue function connecting skeletal muscles to bone remember this is many times in exam is asked tendons are connecting links between muscle and a bone whereas ligament is bone to bone ligament is bone to bone tendon is bone to muscle keep remembering this and then yellow elastic it's loose network of yellow fibers thicker than the aerial or tissue and it's present in ligaments very very important ligaments so whenever you are playing game sports take care of the ligaments because ligaments are the only structures which will not have blood supply so there is no regeneration of the ligament hence you need to take care of it and where do you see this found in walls of blood vessels lungs bronchioles and in all places and reticular tissue consists of reticular cells reticular fibers in fluid matrix and it is made up of a protein called reticulin and location lymph glands spleen bone marrow and what is the function reticular cells are phagocytic you know again depend this follow giving defense to our body and then cartilage very important tissue these are solid and semi rigid it's made up of three things matrix chondroblasts and perichondrium and this is matrix is rubbery made up of chondrion sulfate consists of proteoglycan and matrix is composed of cartilage cells and fibers chondroblasts are cartilage cells okay and perichondrium is outer stiff sheath that bounds the cartilage so injury to cartilage takes more time to heal because of lack of blood supply and types of cartilage haline cartilage fibrous cartilage calcified cartilage the most important one is haline cartilage it is clear homogeneous translucent bluish green very fine collagen fibers will be there and flexible elastic where is it located it's located in branchial rings laryngeal walls sternal ribs tracheal rings all this haline cartilage and fibrous cartilage white fibers and yellow and these are present in epiglottis ear nose etc the yellow elastic cartilage and calcified one is vertebrates it's present in vertebrae what about bone is the hardest tissue in the body due to calcification of its matrix it uh, constitutes a skeleton provide support and protection it can be studied in two ways of course if the bone is dried and decalcified decalcified bone if the bone is kept in uh, dilute hno3 for some time okay we can study that small bones are there. what is important for us is look at the section dried mammalian tissue what you have to remember is that lamella and the haversian canal and a bone cell is called osteocyte and the osteocyte will be in this fashion so this is very very important osteocytes and then the osteocytes as i said just now it stores glycogen in developing osteocytes possess many protoplasmic process called philopodia and these are very very important and haversian system it's a canal it's haversian canal and then bone marrow that is when we cut open the bone vertically inside there will be a cavity and that cavity is called bone marrow so you got red bone marrow and yellow bone marrow and red bone marrow is present in spongy part of the long bones it produces rbc this is important so where is the production of rbc many times in competitive exams it will be asked you have to remember bone marrow bone marrow synthesizes red blood corpuscles and uh, in yellow bone marrow whenever there is emergency the rbc are produced so that's how bone marrow is very very important and then we have got vascular tissues two tissues it has lot of fluid its matrix is uh, matrix lacks fibers no threads will be there and it is fluid connective tissue there are two blood and lymph and all of us know our blood is made up of 
three cells RBC erythrocytes WBC and then platelets and there is a liquid called plasma so in the presence of plasma there are three cells RBC red blood cells WBC white blood cells and platelets and in lymph there is another liquid uh, or colorless or white uh, transparent one it's plasma plus WBC those WBCs are lymphocytes uh, 6.8 liters on an average the adult person will have blood and 6 to 10 percent of the body weight and the study of blood and its properties hematology it's called hematology and what is more important you should not down is pH should be 7.4 and lot of oxygen will be there and plasma as I said liquid part of it watery part of it and the plasma contains the following proteins albumin and globulin these are very very important proteins that are present and look at the minerals present Na plus, Ca plus, Mg plus, Cl minus all these are maintaining what is called density of the blood and then we have got RBC erythrocytes these are very very important and they have hemoglobin in them and the hemoglobin combines oxygen forming oxyhemoglobin so whenever the hemoglobin content comes down it shows that the person has become anemic and that leads to a lot of problems so hemoglobin must be normal range as is given 15 mg per 100 ml of blood down 15 mg person gets anemic and another thing that you must remember is total number of rbc count whenever we are going for histology the pathologist will do blood test and he will give you blood report if it's a man 5.5 million and if it's a woman 4.5 million so rbc count is a must and lifespan again you must remember in our case 180 days and what is the special property is slow flowing blood the rbc form piles called rbc relax by adhering together due to surface tension and wbc these are our soldiers and they are protecting us varieties of wbc's a granulocytes and granulocytes under a granulocytes that is granules are absent monocytes that the largest wbc lymphocytes present in lymph and granulocytes basophils blue black granules and then you got eosinophils brick red and neutrophils these are the varieties of the uh, WBC and whenever the WBC count comes down it's an indication that the person is losing his soldiers and there is a danger how much a WBC should be there in a normal person 5000 to 10,000 should be there and if there is a raise in WBC there is a problem if there is a fall also there is a problem and three to four days is the lifespan and what about platelets last platelets are thrombocytes this is also we need to maintain the number of platelets and how many should be there uh, two lakh fifty thousand per millimeter so two lakh fifty thousand cells should be there platelets should be there and they are colorless and rise in platelet count thrombocytosis fall thrombocryptemia cryptopenia okay thrombocytopenia and uh, lifespan very very important three to seven day, seven days and what are the functions of blood <coughs> rbc transport oxygen and carbon dioxide wbc access soldiers scavengers and builders platelets help in blood clotting and plasma helps in connecting all these so all the four things are important and lymph Another tissue is a colorless one composed of plasma and WBC only lymphocytes and it flows throughout the body through lymphatic ducts and lymphatic glands. It carries material from tissue into blood. Blood is circulating in two way heart to different parts of the body and from different parts of the body back to the heart. It's a two way flow whereas lymph is from lymph glands to the target organ it's a one way flow that's the main difference between lymph and blood and both are important this is the important